Miss Lawrence here and I'm coming to you from my sofa, surrounded by knitwear, ready to film the second part of the Everything That I Knitted in 2022 video. If you haven't seen the first part, I will link it in the description, but I think today I'm going to be showing some more items and I'm going to be moving at a faster pace because these are items that I've knitted while I was doing YouTube, so many of them have been showed in podcast episodes in the past. To briefly touch first on what I'm wearing today, this is sweater number 11 by My Pair of Things Knitwear. Mine is knitted up in Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo in colour number one. Omitama held with a strand of silk mohair. This is a jumper that I have a lot of very mixed feelings about. I think I've spoken about it in some videos in the past, maybe. So I'm going to move swiftly on into things I knitted this year, because I knitted this one last year. Despite just saying that I was going to be showing mostly items that I've shown on this channel before, I actually don't think I have showed this one on my channel before. The reason being, when I knitted it, I thought that I was going to immediately frog it. This is the Horai scarf. I don't remember the designer's name, but it will be linked in the description. It's a free pattern available on Ravelry. This scarf I knitted within 24 hours. Basically, I was going to a Maypole. I was going to St. John's Maypole in Cambridge. I had this lovely sort of light muted teal dress and I had absolutely nothing that I could pair with it that would look good. But it does get very cold at night, even in the summer here in the UK, so I needed something. And so one day before the ball, I was rummaging through all of the yarn in my uni room looking for something that I could knit up into a shawl or a cardigan or something like that in 24 hours. And I found a whole bunch of Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair. I think the colour is just cream. And so I found this pattern on Ravelry and I just spent 24 hours, very little sleep, knitting up an entire shawl. This thing is a bit wrinkly because I think it's been folded up since the Mayball, but I think it's done with two strands. Yeah, two strands held together. It is beautifully drapey and this stitch pattern is gorgeous. Come up close so that you can see it. It almost looks flowery. It's so lovely. The reason I wanted to frog this is because I knitted it in a bit of a hurry, it's not done brilliantly. So I believe this is the cast on edge. I think it's the cast on edge. And it flares out quite a lot. So this doesn't have a very rectangular shape. I did block it before the ball to be rectangular. When I say 24 hours, I mean 24 hours including blocking. I think it was knitted on seven millimeter needles, so it was quite fast. But anyway, the cast on edge flares out quite a lot. So does the cast off edge. And so I almost wanted to rip it out because the yarn is quite expensive and quite nice and either make it again better or make a cardigan or something out of it. But firstly, I think it'll be a complete nightmare to frog. It is two strands of mohair. And also I do, you know, I'm quite attached to it and I do really like it a lot, even with the slightly flared edges. So I think what I'll do is I'll just fold it back up again. And next time I wear a color dress to a ball that would pair well with a cream shawl, I'll block it out to a rectangle again and then wear it once again. The one big flaw of this particular shawl is that knitting for olive mohair sheds really badly. So this sheds cream fluff. And if you're going to a formal event like a ball, all of the men are wearing black tie. So every guy I was like walking near just ended up covered in Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair fluff, which I think they found slightly annoying. Anyway, the scarf is beautiful and I highly recommend knitting it if you want a really fast shawl. I don't recommend doing it in 24 hours, like that was excessive. Okay, next. Yeah, all these things have been showed before. This is the Semper sweater um, by the Knit Pearl Girl. I test knitted it back in the summer. This is again made of Knitting for Olive yarn. In this case, it's Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mohair, both in the shade Powder. This is a really simple raglan DK weight kind of jumper. It has short round neck shaping, but other than that, it's very straightforward. And the pattern is, I think, written in a way that makes it pretty straightforward for beginners. I think it even comes with a really thorough guide to choosing yarn and stuff, which is a really great resource. And it's a little bit cheaper than Sophie's other patterns, I think. Now, I think I knitted this too short. It's kind of hard to tell because it's a little bit boxy on me. I did knit the smallest size, I think. But yeah, it's a little bit boxy on me, and so you can't really tell from its shape how short it is. But it's slightly more cropped than I want. I don't really like cropped jumpers. I like jumpers that sort of hit me around my hips. This one is a good example, actually. I do like the length of this, even though I don't want the shape. Unfortunately, while I did have some yarn left over, I think I gave the rest of the mohair that I had left over to somebody else who wanted to like touch test knitting for olive mohair to see if they found it itchy. So I don't actually have any more of the mohair. So I can't really rip back the hem and make it a little bit longer. 
I really should because this is a lovely jumper made of lovely yarn. Shedding fluff on my nose though and it's really tickling me. It definitely does deserve the time and effort to lengthen this a little so I can wear it more. So I guess at some point I will pick up one more ball of the mohair. Um, I do have quite a bit of the merino left. And I will lengthen it slightly so that I'm happier with the fit. Pattern, I recommend. Yarn, I strongly recommend. This is one of my all-time favourite yarn combinations. It's stunning. And if you're looking for a very simple DK8 jumper, this might just be the one. We're getting into my summer holiday knits here, really. Again, I'm doing these in chronological order. I did the same in the last episode. This is the June Top by Petite Knit. I knitted this pretty much as soon as the pattern released, and I knitted it using Noro Kakigori. I think the yarn is supposed to look like shaved ice, and it totally does. It's really amazing. Get a little bit closer so you can see all the colours. It's amazing. Blues, yellows, oranges. This top is quite outside my um, colour comfort zone, I guess, because it does read as very yellow from a distance. But I really like it, and I used, I think, exactly half of a skein. When you look up the Noro Kakigori, it looks sort of intimidatingly expensive, because I think it's about 30 or £35 pounds per skein, but I can literally knit two tops out of one skein, so that makes it better, I think. It's a blend. I don't remember right now everything that's in it, but it's sort of cotton-based. Um, and it's very dry feeling. I don't tend to knit with cotton or like summery yarns like that. I tend to stick with merino wool even for summer, just because I find that I don't personally get too hot in it, and I love how it looks and I like the knitting experience a lot. But I think I didn't mind this one so much. This top also comes in a fingering weight, I think 2.5mm needle version, but this is the DK weight version on 4mm needles, and so it was a very quick knit, um, it only took me a few days. It's knitted bottom up, but the pattern does also include instructions for using a magic cast on to start it midway. So you knit it bottom up, but then you adjust the length afterwards so you can knit it until you run out of yarn, or until it's the length you want, or whatever. I just knitted it bottom up though. Um, I've knitted a lot of camisoles, so I feel quite confident in knitting it to a length that I'm happy with, and I do love the length of this top. I think this is the size extra small, the smallest size. It fits me well. It has this lovely, I think it's supposed to be you know, I actually think I'm holding this backwards, because I think the back is the lower side, um, so this would be the front. And it is designed as a bra-friendly camisole pattern. I can confirm, it is bra-friendly. I really like that about it, because I do struggle with some of my other favourite summer tops um, that I've hand-knitted, because they often cut in quite close to the neck, um, almost like a racer back kind of style, or like that 90s kind of style. And so I reach for these ones that are bra-friendly a lot more. Oh dear, uh, a bobby pin was falling out of my hair. Coral fix now. Moving on from that onto another bra friendly summer top that I absolutely love. I think I was wearing this in my first ever video on this channel, um, so I must have knitted this right before I filmed my first ever video here. This is the Square Neck Camisole by Garnog Select. I think it was Garnog Select's first ever knitting pattern, and it's exceptionally good considering it was their first ever pattern. I think she's a Norwegian designer. Um, and so when I followed this pattern, it wasn't yet released in English, and so I knitted this whole thing up from a Norwegian pattern. I am monolingual, I do not speak Norwegian, it was a challenge. But, like, I saw this top on Instagram, and I just immediately knew that I had to make it. And so I did. I use Knitting for Olive Merino, as I said. Um, I use Merino to knit summer tops, even in the summer, I find it's very comfortable and I don't overheat in it. And then Knitting for Olive Merino is my absolute favourite one. Its colour selection is just unmatched, it's so beautiful, and this is really a great example of that. I think this shade is called Soft Blue, um, it's probably my favourite colour Nitting for Olive does, I have a little bit more than a jumper in the same colour, and it's just the perfect muted blue-grey colour that I think really suits me. This is another camisole that is actually bra friendly, obviously you have to try a little bit to line your bra straps up with the straps on the camisole, but once you've done that it does fit comfortably over the bra, keeps it covered all day. The front and back are the same and it has quite a lot of waist shaping. I like the waist shaping in this pattern and because I was surprised by how much I enjoyed the fit of this camisole, I have since then done the same waist shaping in all of the other summer tops that I've knitted. So yes, it's a lovely pattern that is now available in English. I strongly recommend checking it out and going to other patterns. Um, I read through some of her patterns the English translations to check that they make sense sometimes, so I have a lot of the patterns that I haven't bought but I've been gifted as a thank you, and so I definitely will be knitting some more of them. There are, there's a lovely hat pattern I have, and a jumper pattern. They're beautiful, I really want them. 
This one was definitely out of season when I knitted it in the summer, but I imagine a lot of you guys have seen it before because this was the step-by-step -step sweater that I knitted um, and I showed the entire process of how I knitted this, every single step, in a very long video on this channel that you can find pretty easily, I think, in my most viewed video. I designed this jumper because I wanted to sort of give back to the knitting community, that sounds so cringe, oh my goodness. But it's the pattern I wish that I had when I was learning to knit. I didn't have a family member or anyone teach me to knit, I just learned from attempting patterns, looking up the things I didn't understand on YouTube, it was perfectly okay, but I think a lot of people, especially nowadays, learn to knit and crochet on TikTok or on Instagram or on YouTube. And I've noticed a lot of people are intimidated by traditional patterns. So I wanted to do a video where I show how to do everything and then make a pretty traditionally written pattern that goes alongside it to help sort of bridge that gap. I don't know how successful I was, but I know a lot of people have knitted this jumper and it makes me really happy to see all of the different versions people have made. A lot of people used it as their first ever jumper pattern, and I wear this jumper so much. In the last video, I was making sure to show in a lot of detail how these things are worn. I didn't depill anything before I filmed, so this has had a lot of wear, and you can see it is starting to pill. This uses one strand of Drops Nepal, which is an Aran weight alpaca wool blend that is very, very affordable. I picked it out because I feel like if you're going to knit your first ever jumper, this will let it come together fast enough that it doesn't feel too discouraging because it's knitted on, I think, 5.5mm needles, but it's also quite cheap and will give you a really high quality and pretty soft jumper too. I realise now that I haven't showed the wear on anything so far in this video, um, but quite literally there is no visible wear at all on any of the garments I've shown so far. The Semper sweater is sort of cared for by the mohair, the mohair keeps the merino from pilling, and my camisoles just don't really pill. I think it's because even under the arms, it doesn't have that friction between the sleeve and the body because there are no sleeves, so it doesn't pill as quickly as a jumper would. Like, I've worn that blue camisole so much over the summer and there is no visible wear on it at all. So yes, this is knitted top down in the round on 5.5mm needles, took me four days to knit, it's so fast. The pattern is free on Ravelry um, and the video tutorial is free on my channel if you're interested in making one, I wear it so much. This version has the funnel neck and it has no short row shaping, but the pattern does include optional short row shaping. So if you are a confident beginner or slightly ambitious, or if you're an experienced knitter who's just looking for a free pattern, um, you can easily include the short row shaping that is given in the pattern. This really needs a deep pill, so <laughs> I probably won't wear it again until I've depilled it, but this winter this has been, well, at least over the past two or three weeks, this has been my most worn jumper by far. Um, I love how wintry the colours are, paired with blue jeans, it just it looks so good, I love it. Okay, something somewhat more summer appropriate. This is the Simple Bralette by Naked Knit. It's knitted out in two strands of a very thin, light fingering weight, I guess, cashmere from Colour Mart. Colour Mart is very hit and miss, um, this particular cashmere isn't soft at all. Like, it's not scratchy, but it's very sort of hard feeling, I wouldn't say it's soft or luxurious, or cashmere feeling compared to when you knit something out with cashmere from a company like Cardiff Cashmere. This is one of those patterns which is just so simple but such a staple. I actually haven't knitted it again since, but I probably will knit more this year because I wear this a lot underneath my other jumpers, just instead of a bra. It's one of those patterns which you can adapt to your own measurements, which is really cool. And um, I think I knitted it pretty much exactly to pattern, apart from it calls for provisional cast ons on the top of all of the triangles and then you knit the straps on afterwards. I just did regular cast-ons and then picked up stitches to do the straps because I don't like fiddling about with provisional cast-ons. Anyway, it's a lovely bralette, I will definitely miss another. And I'm not even going to show you a close-up, there is no visible wear on this at all. I think a big part of that might be because the yarn is so hard, um, it is quite hard wearing and it hasn't pilled. It looks pretty much brand new. I also didn't put any elastic in, um, I think the pattern calls for you to put elastic into the 2x2 rib, I didn't. It's one of those things that I will do in the future if I need to. One of my favourite things about this is I think a lot of these types of bralettes and small camisoles are knitted bottom up, um, and it's very hard to get the strap length exactly right, and also the straps do tend to stretch a little bit. So I like the fact that this is top down and you end up seaming the straps down, because it means that if I ever want to shorten the straps, which I very much do, it is slightly fully offy because the straps are a little bit too long, that's something that I can easily do without having to, with unravelling from the cast on edge or anything like that. Yes, I recommend the pattern, it has some small mistakes in it, but Naked Knit write 
beautiful patterns for underwear, camisoles, I think they just released a pattern for a pair of slippers. They do really cool stuff. I have an accessory. This is the Brigitte bag. It's by Gregoria Fibers, and I knitted this during the summer as a sort of stash busting project. I had quite a lot of dropped saffron. I don't like knitting with cotton, like I said, I don't really like cotton garments. I find they stretch, I don't really like how they look, and I don't like the knitting experience very much. So obviously I decided that I wanted to saffron because this kind of lace with knit four togethers in it, with two strands of cotton, because it's made with two strands held together, was a real challenge. But yes, I figured the best thing to do with cotton would be to make a bag, because it's easy to wash and stretching doesn't matter so much when it's a bag. There isn't a specific size it needs to be. This pattern is gorgeous. It has these lovely details, it has this shell lace pattern, and then the straps are made of two strands of eye cords. So one comes up this way, one comes up this way, and then they twist together. I think it's such a nice, unique look. I would say that Drop Saffron is a heavier fingering weight yarn on its own, so two strands, definitely at least worsted weight, and I was knitting this on three millimeter needles, so it was painful. In the episode where this was a work in progress, one of my early podcast episodes, might have been the first one or the second one, I did talk a little bit about how I did the knit four together and the knit four together through the back loop in a way that was less painful to do. But this was one of those projects I had to put down a lot because it was quite hard on my hands. Anyway, the result is stunning. Um, I'm glad I managed to use up a lot of the drop saffron. Um, the pattern is beautiful and I really do strongly recommend it. It's probably not very beginner friendly. From memory, I think the pattern kind of glosses over how to do some of the decreases and stuff. It's one of those patterns where it's just like decrease in pattern. So if you're a beginner, you might struggle a bit with that. The lace is all written and not charted as well. It's lovely, I really like it. This is a bit of a channel favourite, I think. This was the first sporty knit skirt I knitted. I made a second one of these, which I think will be in the next part of this video. I don't think I'm going to get as far as it today, but this is a knitted skirt with insert shorts. I spoke a lot about it on this channel in the past because it was quite a big project for me. I designed it myself, I figured out how to do it. It's knitted in drops Puna which is 100% alpaca, and I chose it because it is very drapey. It has elastic knitted into the waistband, and it's knitted on 3.5mm needles. So this thing is a lot of knitting. I think a lot of my testers struggled, understandably, because you look at this little tiny mini skirt and you underestimate just how much work it actually takes to get done. I will say without the shorts underneath, it does feel more manageable, um, and it makes a very nice skirt if you're going to wear tights or something underneath. This is, I guess, more of a loungewear piece. It's not that summer suitable because I do find alpaca irritates my skin a little bit in the summer when it's warm, but I like it a lot paired with that bralette I showed just a moment ago, and I have an April cardigan I knitted last year that also is exactly the same colour, and so they make a really cute little matching set. So it's like my nicest loungewear for when I want to wear something really cute just to walk around the house. Like I said, this is my own pattern. I did release the pattern for it a couple of months ago, and it is available on my Ravelry if you're interested in knitting one for yourself. I was quite proud of it. I feel like it's quite a unique piece, and I do wear it a lot. My camera battery is going to die. Karelia. I've showed this one on my channel before. The pattern is by Midori Hirase. This one is abysmally pilled. It's knitted in Filcolana Panilla, which is the sort of sport weight or light DK weight version of the Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool that is so popular. The flower pattern is woven into the yoke as you knit it, rather than being embroidered afterwards, which looks pretty scary in the pictures when you have like 18 tiny balls of yarn hanging off your project, but it's actually not too tricky to do, and I really enjoyed the process a lot. The only thing about this jumper is that I find the sleeves are a little bit too tight for my taste, like, not uncomfortably so, but compared to how boxy the body is, the sleeves feel too tight for me, and so I did end up gifting this sweater to my mum, which is why it's so pilled, because she doesn't really <laughs> shave or depill any of her jumpers, so she wears this all the time, like, pretty much every time she visited me at uni last term, she was wearing this jumper, um, and so this is not entirely representative of how the yarn wears. If you do a little bit of maintenance on it, it is a really lovely yarn option. It's very soft, the cream colour is really pretty, and it's also very affordable. The flowers are done in Rowan Alpaca Classic, which is an alpaca cotton blend. A cotton core with sort of fluffy alpaca fibres in it, and I held it double to do the flowers. This is, I don't remember what size this is, M1 maybe? It has like a small medium and a large medium, I think this is the small medium. 
It definitely says on my Ravelry, but it's slightly irrelevant because I did knit it on a different needle size. I think it calls for a 4.5mm needle and fingering weight yarn, which is very thin, um, and I didn't want that. So I knitted it with a slightly heavier sport to DK weight on a 4mm yarn to get more opaque fabric. Anyway, it didn't suit me, but my mum loves it and I really like how it looks on her, and it pairs really well with a lot of clothes she has in her wardrobe, so I think overall this has been a huge success, and I'm really glad that I knitted it. So far in these two parts of the everything I knitted this year, the thing that's been missing is socks. I haven't showed any socks. I knitted a lot of socks this year, but only really in the second half of the year. I actually knitted some Sunday socks for my sister that are sitting on the table. These should have been in the first part. It's a pair of Sunday socks in this red Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool, the pattern is by Petite Knit. Anyway, back to the socks that I was trying to show. In the summer, I got the 52 Weeks of Socks book, which is published by Liner Magazine, and which includes 52 sock patterns by all different designers. And I started my mission to knit fancy socks, lace socks, cable socks, anything elaborate and fancy like that, every sock being knitted in a different yarn. So these were the first two that I did. This was the first pair I made. These are the Erica socks. I don't remember the designer name, since every design in the book is by somebody different, um, but I will link it in the description. These are a very cute sock with a leaf lace pattern, and these ones I knitted in Phil Kalana are better. I almost knitted them out of one skein, and I have very large feet. I just had to break into the second skein to do like the last four rows of the toe on the second sock. And then these ones are the Keisler sock, which I knitted in Drops Nord. I'll get up close so you can see the patterns on both of these. These are sort of ribbed with a little bit of lace alternating on the ribs. And then the Erica socks have this lovely lace pattern. There's definitely visible wear on both of these pairs of socks, but I don't hold it against these yarns at all. I wear these socks so much. These are probably my two most worn pairs of socks, um, and there are many more coming up in this video. I think I'll just show one more item and I'll set the rest aside for the next video. This is another summer top that I made. This is the Twist Loop Top by Other Loops. I love this pattern. Hopefully you can see this amazing cable design, it is beautiful. The downside to the pattern is it is one of those not so bra friendly ones where the armhole cuts in a lot at the top, but other than that, all of the detailing, the eye cord edges, the folded collar, they're all beautiful and really well thought out. The pattern is well written, the cables are charted. The only downside was I knitted this in a couple of extra balls of drops flora that I had lying around, which is not the yarn for the job. This is too hot for me to wear in hot weather in the summer. Merino I don't have a problem with. Drops Flora is a wool alpaca blend and so it's definitely too hot for me. I think I use only a couple of skeins though and Flora is really cheap. So this was super affordable and I do wear it in cooler summer weather as well as as an underneath layer for jumpers and stuff. So it does get wet. But this is a pattern that I really like to revisit and knit up again using a more suitable yarn choice. There's no wear to show you on this, it looks pretty much brand new, although I did knit it right at the end of the summer, so it hasn't had as much wear as my other summer tops. Flora has the same fibre content as Drops Nepal, which I knitted the grey stripes step-by-step -step sweater in, and that does have visible wear, so I assume this would wear similarly if used for a jumper. The colour is White Fog, which is a shade that I really, really love. It's like a greyish cream, so it's not too yellowy, it's a really nice colour, and I do recommend it. Um, if you're looking for a fingering weight yarn that's pretty high quality and very affordable, this is a great option. I've mentioned before I don't necessarily want to use drops because there are some things that I don't like so much about the company, but their price to quality ratio is pretty unbeatable. It's a lovely pattern and I'd love to knit it up again using more of a summer hot weather friendly yarn. I'm going to stop there because my camera is going to die and I've showed a lot of things. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. There is at least one, potentially two more parts still to come. I'll try and get them out maybe in the new year. Um, I'm sorry it's been a four-parter. I didn't want it to be, but I've knitted so many things this year and it's just a lot to go through. I feel like I haven't been speaking too much about each item either. But yes, I'll be back and see you with another video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.